Okay, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, I'm going to like to hear a story. Well, I'm going to tell you a story. This is a story about how I started driving a truck and how I came into the career that I'm in now. Uh, without dr dragging this out too, too much, because I tend to ramble when I tell stories, <laughs> that uh, my story is a little different. So um, what I notice on YouTube is that uh, most of the YouTube truckers are with a mega carrier. You know, they went through the whole process of the school and then the over the road training with a trainer in their truck. Yeah, they have stories about, you know, how weeks and weeks of uh, driving with the trainer in their truck and, you know, the stories they have with their trainers and stories about how to get along with your trainer while you're training and all this stuff. And uh, it's a big step to get in, get into the truck solo and make that decision on whether you're gonna do a lease purchase or be a company driver, da 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 da. Well, my path was not like that at all. There's, so there's a couple of things to point out. The first thing is that I did not have that kind of a beginning and a training because um, frankly, I couldn't get any single mega carrier to even stay on the phone with me long enough to recruit me into their into their school or their driving program. Oh. You know, and um, at the time, I was very upset about that. Um, now, there's a couple of reasons why that I won't go into, but I, I believe that they were a little severe. But I do believe that um, I was a good candidate for their program and I believe that part of it, honestly, I will say I believe it was because I'm female. But we're not going to beat that dead horse because <laughs> life goes on and my life went on. What I did was I went to a community college and I uh, got my CDL through their, their program, which was a five week program, I think it was five or six weeks. And um, then I got my CDL. And then I was, uh, when I was looking for a job, then I was a recent grad. Well, uh, that's pretty hard. You know, it's pretty hard to find a job with a carrier, uh, with, your, with your CDL Class A, um, when you do it through a community college or a, a, or a vocational school. Because as soon as you finish and as soon as you graduate and get your CDL, you're on your own, you know, and they don't really have much of a placement program. So uh, there was a big gap after I got my CDL and finished the school. Uh, there were several weeks that went by where I couldn't find a job. My only hope really that was working out as a prospect was Trans Am, which is a mega carrier. And um, they hire a recent grad with no experience. And, but the thing was, it was gonna take forever to, to get going with them because uh, they said that they didn't have any female trainers until like two months later, you know, down the road was when their first availability would be for a female, you know. Well, that that didn't set too well with me because I, I was feeling like I was going to forget how to drive <laughs> in that time period. Well, long story short, I, I lucked into getting a job with this company that that um, hauls wheat flour. They're a nationwide company, but I was gonna get on regionally with this company. I was gonna travel around like Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and parts of Texas. They didn't have much of a training program. And the reason why is because they really never had hired rookies before. So, you know, I was lucky. I was so lucky that they even considered me. And to this day, I really don't even know why, you know. Um, I had an interview with the driver manager and, you know, I think he, he saw how bad I wanted it. You know, I really, I wanted to have a trucking career so bad I could taste it. And I knew that I would be good at it, um, but I was nervous, you know. and. Uh, and let me back up a little bit. When I was in school, I will say that I feel like that the instructors there and the other students in the class, which were mostly guys, 
uh, they did not believe in me at all. Um, I could sense it, you know, I mean, and that, that's okay, you know, I mean, uh, I wasn't like a natural at it, you know, I mean, I was nervous, you know, that you have to learn the shifting and the backing and all that, and um, it, uh, I felt like I didn't really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one instruction because I felt like they kind of thought, and eh, she's not going to make it anyway, so don't even waste your time on her. Um, so, but because I wanted it so bad, I didn't let any of that bother me. You know, I really didn't. So anyway, fast forward back to where I, I got on with the, the company hauling the wheat flour. Uh, my on the my over the road training consisted of one one day with a trainer in the truck with me. And so I show up early, early in the morning. Um, they stick me in a truck, and the trainer, he, he rides with me to, to Kansas, from the Panhandle of Texas to Dodge City, Kansas. And then we, get, uh, we pick up a, a loaded trailer there, and then we take that down to, to, to southern Oklahoma, south of, uh, south of I-40. And by this time, it's like like the middle of the night, and um, he shows me how to hook up the hose to the silo, and um, explains about the gauges and the pressures and all that. And mind you, I didn't even know what a pneumatic trailer was. I didn't even know anything about this type of, of tra truck and trailer. So. Um, I took notes you know, and just tried to remember as much as I could. Luckily, I'm mechanically inclined and I have a real good grasp on technical things. So I kind of understood the instructions, but I didn't really understand what was going on. You know, with I didn't understand what was going on with the, the pressure and how the product gets into the silo. I mean, I you know, uh, kind of, sort of. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. that. That stuff blows from the trailer through that hose into the silo. Got it. <laughs> but I mean, there's a lot more to it than that, you know. So I mean, you have to have your pressures right. You know, you can clog up really easy. Um, you have to have a really good seal on all of your hatches and your valves and stuff on the trailer. Um, anyway, so that was my training, and then um, we go back to Dodge City, and. Uh, he gets in his truck and he leaves and he's out of there and the next day I was on my own I was in my own truck I had my bedding a few overnight items and I get my first load and I'm gonna do it by myself that was it and I tell you what it was scary <laughs> um, I you know what I didn't know how much I didn't know and it was sheer will. Um, I think that it was those two things that, that got me through. One, I didn't know how much I didn't know. And two, was my sheer will to do it. And um, so, uh, from that point on, for the, for, for the remainder of the year, it was one fiasco after another. I am telling you, my rookie year was, it was beyond words. I made so many mistakes. Um, I put a trailer in a ditch. I wound up at the border of Mexico. <laughs> you know, in the middle of the night. Uh, I scraped the top of the trailer under underneath a, a, a loading bin thing where, uh, it was too low, and I scraped the tops of the hatches <laughs> off. Um, oh my God, I wound up in places that I should not be. I wound up in the uh, parking, the dirt parking lot of a trailer park, like a mobile home park, <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, um, I, you know, I punctured a, a trailer tire. I, I could go on and on. Uh, luckily, my driver manager was, he was not patient with me, but he, he let me stay on 
and he taught me a lot. He really did, but it was tough love. I mean, it, I I never cried so much. I cried. I uh, there there are more incidents that I'm not even telling you. You know that I may tell you at some at some time. But this isn't the time. Um, so anyway, you know that's how my whole first year started, and that's how my training was. Um, I feel that I needed more training. So. Uh, that's that, but you know, uh, that's nobody's fault. Um, the company, like I said, the company that hired me for the very first time was very gracious, I guess is the uh, word. I'm very thankful and I'm very grateful that they gave me a chance. So how can I sit here and say, they didn't give me enough training? You know, like I cannot, I cannot begrudge them for anything because they gave me a chance. Okay, so um, after that, so that, that you know, I did a, about a year of that, and I got uh, I got much better uh, through you know month by month. Um, I just I stuck with it. I stayed uh, stoic, you know. I really did. I kept a good attitude, and that is one thing that my manager said about me. He said, uh, "I'll tell you one thing about Molly. Uh, you know, she's not that good of a driver, but that girl never quits. That girl." will not quit and that made me feel really really good because I think that that's true I, I I refused to quit and like I said he taught me a lot he made me a good trucker um, I also had to learn about electronic logs pretty much all on my own um, you know I, I didn't even know that that you know when you're driving and you start your day on your electronic logs that you have a 14 hour period and then that's and then it stops like I thought that if you stop anywhere and you put it in put it on off duty or sleeper berth that then you know you can just take as much time as you want to take a nap or whatever <laughs> and then get up and start going again and you've still got all kinds of hours to drive, you know. <laughs> no clue. I had no clue. And um, there was one time I was gonna, I had a load going to South Carolina and I was scared to death. And um, I got through to Oklahoma City and I, I thought, you know, I'm tired. And so I stopped and, you know, somewhere out off of I-40, somewhere, but like out in the country. And, um, took a nap and I just took a long break like three hours you know and then my driver manager calls me he's like what are you doing oh. and I was like I'm taking a nap he was like do you realize that you just wasted three hours on your clock and now in in one hour you're gonna have to pull over and take a 10 hour break you should have just turned the three hour thing into a 10 hour now you're gonna be late for your and I was like oh no I didn't I didn't realize that I'm sorry uh yeah so yeah I mean uh it's embarrassing for me to sit here and tell you how ignorant I was but um you know um, I learned a lot <laughs> so um and it taught me humility you know and humility isn't such a bad thing so uh I definitely that first year of driving I didn't think I had any business even calling myself a trucker yet I mean I, I just didn't I you know I was I was very uh, quiet and humble and um, I, I didn't go on social media I I didn't do anything I just really really focused and if I hadn't have focused as much as I had I would have failed so that's another thing that I will say is it requires so much focus it really does and uh, it's easy to focus so when you focus that's half the battle you know so focus okay okay so then um, I kind of finished out my 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 uh, span of time there at, at that company that hauled the wheat flour and uh, we parted ways and um, very soon after, I found a, uh, an ad on Craigslist for a driver that was looking, not a driver, I'm sorry, for an owner, an owner operator that was looking for a driver to drive his truck out in the oil fields hauling frac sand. 
And so I went to talk to him. It turned out he was right there in my very, very town that I live in. And um, he started asking me, you know, have you ever worked in the oil fields before? And I was like, no. And he was like, get ready because it, it, it is a rod. But anyway, so um, his, that's how I got into hauling frac sand. Uh, turns out, you know, that it's the same, same type of trailer, the pneumatic trailer. So I already knew how to do that. And uh, that, you know, that's, that, that's a pretty big learning curve. So, you know, when I got out here, um, the, I'd already had a year under my belt of driving and the learning curve um, for coming out into the hauling the frac sand, I would say, was learning how to, um, you know, drive on the country roads, the, the, the really rugged lease roads, uh, the ditches, the, the, the corners that could really get your trailer, the dark, dark roads at night, hard to see, um, uh, all kinds of weather conditions, and then of course the physical labor that's involved whenever you're doing the hoses and all of that stuff. So I'm not going to go into all of that on this story, but that is my story on how I got into trucking and got my, my driving education. Um, like I said, it's quite a bit different than uh, the route that people go when they go to school through a mega carrier. And uh, that's, that's how I wanted to do it, but um, nobody would have me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That is okay because we good now. We Gucci. Gucci.